Welcome to PTC Express Video Tip of the Month. My name is Leo Green. Understanding the options as well as the nuance of the selection process is critical to the mastery of any CAD tool. ProEngineer Wildfire accommodates a multitude of selection styles to suit the user. Today let's see if we can shed some light on this often misunderstood essential topic. The process of selection is common throughout computer applications. Let's review some of the basics. With the left mouse tap, you select the object, in this case a part or file or whatever it is that's underneath the mouse. So a left mouse tap selects. Left mouse tap, left mouse tap. If I hold a control key down, I can select multiple objects. If I release the control key and select an object, the original selection group is replaced with the newly selected one. So you could call that a selection collector. Control key and I can collect a number of files and then replace that selection collector with a new. If I hold a, the shift key down and I select another a second file, in this case a part, it will collect all those files in between in that particular list. And if I select outside of the list selection area, they all become cleared. This is very, very basic, common throughout most applications. Select with the left mouse button, a left tap if you will, control key to select more than one, shift key to collect up a, a group in a particular list and outside of the realm to clear. Now in Pro Engineer we have something new called a pre-highlight indicating this is what you're going to get if you click your left mouse button. Now if I left tap I select a part now my pre-highlight has changed on the part that's selected I'm pre-highlighting geometry selections. On a part that I've not selected, I pre-highlight the entire part. And now that new part is selected, and now I can hit the geometry of those parts. So, part selection, part selection, part selection, part selection, and part selection. If I now pick geometry, now I've jumped to a geometry selection to where my pre-highlights or all geometry selection regardless of the part that I'm on. And once again if I'm outside the realm I select that clears the selection buffer if you will and I'm jumped now back to part selection. Okay so I can jump to geometry. What if I want features? Pick a part, right click, hold down and I can activate. Now I am essentially in part mode at the assembly level. And with a control A or control activate the window, I jump back to activating the top level assembly. Alternately, in the selection filter drop down, I can select features where now the pre highlight is of individual features where I can simply double click and modify the value directly. Now you notice here a little bit of a nuance. I'll go back to this smart selection in the selection filter. You'll notice here that if I pick a part, I have to move the mouse before I start to get an alternate selection. Let me show you what I mean. If I come over here, there's the part highlight, so I can select the part, and you notice that the edge doesn't pre-highlight until I move the mouse a little bit. Again, pre-highlight, select, nothing happens until I move the mouse a little bit. And so you may wonder, how come I don't get anything happening under my mouse? Well, you have to move the mouse a little bit and that will alter what is available in the selection queue. Okay, so let me take a look at what that is. If I right click, right tap, we get a number of different highlight options. This is a selection queue. Right tap. If I write hold down, I can pick from a list. And this will uh, illustrate the selection queue directly and where I am in it. So the first selection was that edge, second was that edge, then we have something called an intent edge, the two different surfaces associated in that particular area, the intent surfaces, and then back to the entire assembly. So again, what is, what's happening there? I'll click off the part. I'll go over here now. And if I pre-highlight this part, select, 
Nothing happens until I move the mouse a little bit. Then you'll see I get some surfaces. And if I right tap, you can see I can toggle through a number of different choices. Move the mouse, I'll get a different selection cue. Right tap now for another different selection. And if I come over here, for example, a lot of stuff going on in this corner. And if I select one of these parts, pick from list, you see now I've got a ton of different geometry choices. So, select, move the mouse, right tap for query select, right hold, pick from list. And that gives you an idea of how to be very quick, very efficient with your selection process. Okay, let's take a quick look at selecting geometry. I'm going to pick this part, right click and open, and now I'm looking at, at the part by itself. If I select and then move the mouse, select again, I might be able to pick an edge. If I hold the control key down, I can pick another edge or another, maybe, maybe a vertex from here, or maybe right click tap a few times to pick a surface. These surfaces and edges could be copied. I could use them for references for other things. But let's talk about chains of edges now. I'll pick, pick. Now if I hold the shift key down, I can pick this one as a part of a chain, this one as part of a chain, and so on, all the way around my part. But you'll notice here, it's not letting me pick up other chains that might be appropriate. So watch this. If I Control C, Control V, I'm now creating an exact curve copy, and I'll get even more options. So let me clear the selection buffer. I'm just going to pick an edge. If I hold the Shift key down, right click, pick from list, and you'll see here I've got a number of options. I can have a tangent chain of edges. I can have a surface loop from two, and there's one that goes around one way, one that goes around the other way. And then there's also a surface loop, which would be this entire chain here. So let me show you how quickly that can be selected. With the shift key down, I can come over here, tap my right mouse. That's a surface chain loop one way or the other. Or maybe here, one way or the other. Or I can come here and get a tangent chain very quick, very easy, and again the idea here is to move your mouse, set up the selection queue, and then with the right tap cycle through those individual selections or right hold and pull up the list. Now let's take a look at some surface selection. Let's take a look at this part here. Pick the part and pick a surface. Now let's say I wanted to pick all these curved surfaces. Well, I could start picking them one at a time with the control key down, pick, 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 or I could pick one of them and with the shift key down I can say all but these. Release the shift key and they're all selected. This is something called the seed surf and boundary selection technique where I can pick a surface, let's pick one surface, and I can choose which surfaces to pick or select up to, like water cascading. So if I were to pick that surface as, say, the seed surf, and then pick this one with the shift key down, and this one with the shift key down, it'll pick this one and the top one as well, as they are connected, seed surf and boundary. Again, pick a seed surf, and then the boundaries with the shift key down seed surf and boundary so I'm gonna pick now these ones as my boundary release the shift key and it selects all those now if I control C control V I'm now making a copy if I choose my references here you'll see a details button which shows the surface selection criteria and how it was done so I can set it up individual surfaces, in this case seed surf and boundary, where the anchor surface is this one, you see it highlight, and then the boundary surfaces are these four. So these are some of the nuance, these are some of the techniques associated with selection. Very, very, very cool. Lots of great options to use, and uh, I hope a little of this made sense to you. 
Hope you've enjoyed this tip on selection criteria. My name's Leo Green, and thanks for watching.